Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 5, Lesson 14, and today we're going to be finding common units or number of units to compare two different fractions. So I'm going to again do a few problems from the homework tonight. There are a whole lot of problems spread across these six different problems because there's all these little sub-problems. I'm certainly not going to do tons of them for you, but I'd be happy to do about three of them for you as a way of helping you out with tonight's homework. So let's take a look at a couple of those. Let's take a look at problem number one and read that together. Compare the pairs of fractions by reasoning about the size of the units. Use greater than, less than, or equal to. Let's take a look at 1a. We're asked to compare 1 third and 1 sixth. Okay, well, we might initially think, well, 6 is a bigger number than 3, so maybe we just have, uh, maybe we just have one of those cases where this is greater, right, than the other. But let's think about it a little bit. Um, I always like to think, when I think about fractions, I like to think about food. So let's see, how big is a third of a pizza? Well, let's see, a third of a pizza is a pretty big piece, right? It'd be something like, something like that. Well, even more than that, right? It'd be a big chunk of pizza, right? A third of a pizza, maybe, I don't know, about that much of a pizza? How big would a sixth of a pizza be? Well, that'd be maybe a more normal slice, something like that. Thirds, right, means we've divided our whole into just three pieces, so we have pretty big pieces, whereas sixths, mean that we've divided into quite a few pieces, six of them, and our pieces are not all that big. So I think after thinking about it a little longer, I think that one-third is bigger than one-sixth because the units are bigger for thirds, and we have the same number of them. We just have one of them in each case. All right, let's take a look at another problem. We'll take a look at problem number three. I skipped number two because they model one of the solutions for you in your actual homework book, so I'll trust that that's enough to get you going. Let's take a look at number three. Draw two tape diagrams to model each pair for the following of the following fractions with related denominators. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to compare. All right, well, let's go ahead and do our tape diagrams. Let's go ahead and do a tape diagram for two-fourths. Okay, got our whole unit there. We're going to divide into fourths, so let's see, that's one, two, three, four, and we're going to shade in exactly two of those four parts. Awesome. Okay, that's the top one. Now let's be real careful to draw another single unit that's about the same size, and for this one, we are asked to model one-eighth, so we need to divide this up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight parts. And in this case, we're just highlighting, it looks like, just one of those parts. So it seems pretty clear that this fraction, 2 fourths, is a lot bigger than this fraction, 1 eighth. You know, let's think about that for a second, too. Could we have figured that out without a tape diagram? Let's see. Well, which of the units are bigger? Let's see. Fourths and eighths. Wow. Well, fourths are bigger pieces, right? We would rather have a fourth of a pizza than an eighth of a pizza. So this is the bigger unit. Not only is it the bigger unit, we have more of the units. So these are bigger pieces that we have more of, where these are smaller pieces that we only have one of. So I bet we could have figured that one out even without our tape diagrams. But certainly with our tape diagrams, even mine being a little imprecise, we easily could figure out that two-fourths is bigger than one-eighth. Let's look at one more problem. Let's take a look at problem number four. Draw one number line to model each pair of fractions with related denominators. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to compare. So we're going to draw one model, one number line to model each pair of fractions. So we're just, this time, rather than doing two models, we're just doing one model. And let's see, our number lines usually include zero, they usually include one, and then they often include the one half, right, as a benchmark fraction. Now let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's take a look. We're comparing 11 twelfths. Okay, so I noticed that the numerator and the denominator are very close, but the numerator is a little smaller. So that tells me that we are going to be somewhere out here close to 1. In fact, we're going to be exactly 1 twelfth away from that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark here and say that that is about 11 twelfths on our number line. How about our other one? Our other one is 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Well, let's see. Zero, that would be zero fourths, and this would be four fourths. So in between there would probably be two fourths. Yeah, and sure enough, that that is two fourths, right? We could express one half as two fourths, but we have three fourths, so that looks like it's going to be halfway between that. So I think our other fraction is going to be right here, three fourths, halfway between two fourths, one half, and four fourths or one, and that tells me that eleven twelfths is going to be bigger than three fourths. 
So I'm going to answer with a greater than symbol there. Again, let's see if we could figure that out logically as well without a number line. Let's just imagine our number line wasn't there. One of the ways to think about 11 twelfths is it is almost 1. How far away from 1? Well, it is just 1 twelfth less than 1. And we could think about 3 fourths as being pretty close to 1 too. How much less than 1? Well, we just needed 1 more fourth to get to 1. So if we think about it in relation to 1, which is one of our benchmarks, we could think, well, this number is just a tiny wedge less than 1, 1 twelfth less than 1, whereas this part right here is 1 fourth less than 1, and 1 fourth is a bigger piece. So we have traveled back towards 0 a little farther for this number than we did for this number. And thus, we know that this number is closer to 1 than this number, and thus this number is greater than the other. So 11 twelfths is greater than 3 fourths. So we can do it on our number line. We could have done it with our two area models, or we could think it through a little bit to see how close these numbers are to, these fractions are to our benchmark fractions. All right, well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time.